It's time for the Widmer Brothers Perfect Playlist. Because no one has a better taste in music than you. It's the Widmer Brothers Perfect Playlist. I am Gustav, Dan, Kyle, Will, Chris from the band Bastille with me here in the studio. Hello. Hello. Hi, hello. Thanks for dropping by. Thank you for having us. You guys are back here in Portland. You're playing tonight at the Keller Auditorium. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, uh, it's been like... It's been like a couple of years since you guys came by and, and did this, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we were here um, in we were in this part of the world in December. But okay. But we haven't... You haven't done a perfect playlist like in a, a while. No, we haven't. And we haven't done a, a proper, like, a proper headline show here for a while. So really? We're really excited to be back. I understand on the, uh, on the you guys are touring behind the uh, new album Wild World, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, you just played Eastern Europe not long ago. Yeah. That's ama- had you guys Had you guys played over there before, or was that a first time, first time kind of experience for you? It was the first time sort of, um, we've been to a couple of places, but not like Russia or... Yeah, we haven't, we, we've played festivals in that part of the world, but the, you know, the very nature of that is that you kind of fly in... Um, go to the, a field in the middle of nowhere and leave. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice. Like, I think it was our first experience for all of us of, of like, properly travelling and playing our own shows. Mm. Russia was so interesting. What was interesting about it? What was, like, the most... What, like, was there something really unexpected about the Russian gig, or...? Um, the gigs were amazing. I think the fans were kind of super excited that we were there, which was yeah. really cool. Um, they were very generous. They got us lots of presents yeah. and things. And we, had a, and we had time, which we rarely do, to go and explore and, like, um, look at the cities and stuff. Sure. And just the buildings there are just... It was shocking. It was, um, it was just amazing. It's just, just a whole other world of architecture. Yeah. yeah. That we're not used to, and it's kind of really... You know, just walking through St. Petersburg and walking through Moscow, which are so different. Red just, Square, I assume, of course, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> we like went straight to Red Square, and, and bizarrely, we were kind of be, being followed by about thirty fans. <laughs> it was kind of like being in the Matrix, where if you look around, then like someone just turns into an agent, but there was a, yeah. a fan instead. Was there a woman <laughs> yeah. in a red dress also? <laughs> <laughs> just, we were the same at any point. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and get to your song choices. Uh, this first one I was mentioning, so this is from Frank Ocean from the album that came out, uh, I guess it was like sometime last year, Blonde. It was yeah. sort of like pretty enigmatic when it was released, I remember yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. And something that we don't typically play on 94.7, but uh, tell me about the uh, the Frank Ocean tune. What's the inspiration with this one? Well, I, I just, that album I thought was incredibly beautiful, and I think it's always interesting when there's an artist who's held in quite high esteem, mm-hmm. who then goes away for a while, and then, his, you know, there's a lot of mystery surrounding him. And, you know, I think he's kind of a very respected artist. And it was interesting for me as a fan when his, you know, the way that he rolled out his, his albums, the way that he kind of screwed over Universal Records and, <laughs> right. and, and, and did his own thing, I thought was, you know, I think everybody kind of looked to that and was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly yeah. screwed over. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, Allegedly. Allegedly. We have to oh, do yeah. the, the air quotations. But, but kind of, it, but I think, you know, it did it in, via an entirely legal path and all that kind of stuff. But it's just interesting. He's now a completely independent artist. He made this record. It's kind of he put two records out in the space of three days. Mm-hmm. And this song, Self Control, I just think is is incredibly beautiful. I think his way of working is quite patchwork, and and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of guitar on this record. I think, which was quite surprising. It's very like minimal, and sure. the production is 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 uh, is detailed, but it's sort of it's very restrained, very minimal. Maybe not the record that everybody was expecting to come out but like it's you know i think um i was just really struck by the kind of like soft electric guitar on the record and a lot of it is um uh, like some of the musicians from radiohead which is very cool i was going to say radiohead almost sort of paved the way for the surprise self-release sort of mess with the record label kind of thing yeah so. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but so it's cool that they kind of played on the record too and it's yeah. uh yeah it's just really beautiful and this this song in particular there's a moment where i think that the thing with the album is it takes quite a lot of listens because they're not conventionally structured songs at all so they'll be like the most beautiful moment on the record that I think happens in this song, where this, these strings just come in around you and this high, distorted vocal comes in. Yeah. It only happens once. Right. You know, so it, it, there's, as a record, you sort of have to consume it as a piece, like repeatedly to really get like the rewarding things from it. Anyway, right. that's, that's, that's my two cents. Oh, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's and listen that's, to That's it. me like cutting myself off. <laughs> 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 that's all right. It's uh, Frank Ocean and Self Control on 94.7 FM. 94.7 Alternative Portland and Future Islands Seasons Waiting on You. Gustav in the studio with members of Bastille playing tonight at the Keller Auditorium. Tell me about that song from um, Future Islands. Why Why that selection? I love the album single. Sorry, I, 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 I'm massively dominating. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very talky guy, Dan. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. have to just be Dan. Everyone can jump in. It's such a good record. I, I think it's brilliant. And this was the first song that I think introduced a lot of people to the band who've been around for a long time, but... Um, 
but this tune, when they played it on Letterman, I think, it just kind of ca captured the world's attention. And uh, he's such an enigmatic performer. We saw they played um, at Coachella mm -hmm. last, last weekend or the weekend before with us, so we watched their set, and it was brilliant. I think he's kind of for a, maybe, I don't know, for, for, for a guy of his stature to dance like he does on stage. I was going like, to say that, It's kind yeah. of a beautiful thing. I was just like, you are winning when it comes to being a front man. I did wonder why you're dancing a change recently. Mm. <laughs> does it does it explain quite a bit? <laughs> right. Well Dan, you actually admitted to being somewhat of a bad dancer oh, recently. Terrible. So maybe terrible. Yeah. So but it's something to work on, right? If there's anything I learned from him, it's that um just go with what you're comfortable with. Yeah. If everybody else thinks it's awful. Whatever. With re <laughs> with regard to live shows, let's talk about Bastille and the show that you're playing tonight, obviously, at Keller Auditorium. You've been on, on the road for a while. When we last talked here in the studio, you took over with your songs. We were reminiscing about that river trip down the Thames oh, yeah, yeah, years yeah. ago when you guys were playing on the boat and, you know, making the video and everything like that. Is, will there ever be will there ever be a possibility once again for Bastille to do something like that? Sort of just uh just get somewhere you're shaking your head no. We almost <laughs> lost Will on that one. Yeah, Will on, <laughs> that, on, on that first yeah, one. It was, um, it was stressful because I didn't, I don't like fun. Okay. Fun. <laughs> um, and I don't smoke. Uh -huh. And it was raining a lot, so we were in a smoky small boat that was designed for, I think, 10 people and there's about four, four, four yeah. it was designed for four, four. Yeah. See, that, there's, about, there's about like 50 of us on there see that sounds like the ultimate sort of British experience to me like if I were to go over to Britain and I wanted to like have like this sort of full immersion I'd want to be on a smoky boat in the middle of the rain <laughs> with maybe some angry will from Bastille yeah, yeah exactly I'm hanging out with will a yeah. mole on my forehead just started bleeding <laughs> in protest um, I think I might enjoy it more now because my life isn't so terrible because sure. basically we had this horrible week and then I had to go back to work in a job I hated and it was, what? it was a, a low point for me. Having to take holiday and it'd be probably the least relaxing holiday <laughs> of your life. So what, what job was it that you hated so much, Will, that you didn't want to go back to? I kind of miss it now. I used to work in a girls' clothes shop. Oh, all right. So I used to meet, you know, lots of nice women. Used to meet some nice women. I was yeah. gay. And well, of course, yeah. Like, being a male radar. woman, yeah. Huh. <laughs> 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 it's like a, it's like a dark wow, that's really sinister. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, let's move on to the next song, shall we? Oh, please, <laughs> but please. To, to, to answer your initial question, our tour now is it's very different to that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's sure. less under the radar. <laughs> um, we put together this tour that's kind of, uh, I think, a sort of like worthy companion piece to our record, which is about how you know, watching the news at the moment, the world can seem pretty mad. But yeah. the, but the, like, just find positivity in it, and blah blah blah. And people are great, and so we find, we sort of kind of ramped up the themes of the album into this show that we spent a lot of time putting together the visuals for and sure. it's kind of like a like it's really it's fun and it's both our records and our mixtapes and stuff but it's sort of this slightly concept show where you from when you walk into the room it's being hosted by this um, sort of politician. I was going to ask if there was that sort of overseeing media kind yeah, of presence. Very to much it. so. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's how that's how you guys rolled out the album Wild yeah. World, which I thought was really intriguing as to how you did that. It was it was neat. Thank you. But that, yeah, so we we wanted <clears throat> excuse me, we wanted that to sort of thread through everything, and so it's it's very much there in the tour, and it's kind of yeah, I think we're we're just really proud of the show. It's and how it looks, and it's the first time we've ever really put loads of thought and time into creating a kind of a one-off show that will, you know, when we come back with new music, sure. it's going to be completely different again. So it's quite fun to, in that respect. Well, thing is, we, we've, we've taken off boats already. <laughs> Mumford and Sons did a train tour over here, I think. They maybe, did, that's Maybe right. we get all, all instruments mounted on the top of, like, stunt biplanes and we do a gig, <laughs> like, in formation. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I was going to suggest playing on an airplane, but that's been done. Uh, Jack White played on a bus, so that's out of the question. You know, I mean, it's, we're starting to run out of transportation. Canoes. 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 There canoes. we go. Canoes. Yeah. Bastille oh. on canoes. I love it. <laughs> uh, the fish. <laughs> so, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, the only living boy in New York. Tell me about this one. Um, it's just a really beautiful song. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I think that album, Bridge Over Troubled Waters, is kind of... Um, it's... It, when I was growing up, I, was th I thought it was the greatest hits because it's just so full of <laughs> massive tunes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This, this song's just really beautiful. I love the sort of the vocal arrangement, the, the sort of choiry, ethereal background thing, and I don't know, it makes me it makes me feel nice. Oh. I think. That's oh, so genuine. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. I like that you weren't quite sure of your own emotions. <laughs> I feel nice. I think I do. <laughs> Dirty Harry from Gorillas on 94.7 FM, Gustav with Bastille in the studio. And you were just reminding me, I totally spaced this. Uh, Gorillas, the new album is coming out. Don't it's, like, it. it's like, wow. This yeah, Friday. This happening. Friday. Uh, it's been like 76 years coming. I know. It's finally <laughs> here. I know it's, I know it's so close. 
Um, yeah, we're, we're all really excited, um, and we've heard some amazing, uh, amazing things about it, and, and, um, I mean, like, just, the last, the, like, the last ones are just kind of masterpieces, and yeah. in, and just sort, sort of, like, really just new and weird and different, and I think, I, and I, well, I hope that's what this one's gonna be. I mean, it is, we I know think, it is. Uh, yeah, and from what we've heard so far, it sounds amazing, and I think it, Damon Auburn is so clever at kind of bringing people together, to collab you know to collaborate and and bringing with this band a kind of world of like so many so many mad different influences yeah and like from like Della Soul to kind of like old rave music to modern hip hop and you know there's so many kind of very current people on this record I'm really excited about it let's talk about influences uh, with you guys and and most specifically the most recent album wild world um, I understand that there was sort of there was sort of an interesting recording process here it started out a little like a little bit more electronic and then you added perhaps more guitar as time went on. Feel free to correct me, but uh, that's... I, that's, I think I'm it was really... We just didn't want to kind of give ourselves any rules with the record. I mean, we... I think we were in this this strange position where we released our first album, and then because it did quite well, we were able to re-release it with, like, essentially a whole other album on the end. We made another mixtape. We did mm -hmm. quite a lot of other tunes. So I feel like even by the time we got to our second record, we'd almost done, like, another two records in between and had this three, four year period of, of touring to just experiment and, and, some, and that led us sometimes down a kind of very electric guitar heavy route and, and sometimes down a much more electronic path and um, it was really like just touring and touring and travelling and making songs backstage and then we had this period at the beginning of last year where we just kind of pulled it all together back in the studio in London where we were and I think we definitely take influence from people like Gorillaz when it comes to, to not really caring about genre and, and not wanting to be confined at all to yeah, you know, like a lot of our tunes, there's a song "Bad Blood" on our first album that I think if you take the vocals and stuff away, it's it's essentially like a kind of hip hop beat with you know with oh, very yeah, much really with like in yeah. mind, and um, I think that's the thing with with our music. As soon as you put my annoying voice on top of it, it's, um, <laughs> it sounds it sounds like Bastille, and, I've, and uh, so yeah, maybe we should re-release our instrumental versions of our album. Well, it's good to have a lot of material, anyways. So there could be more stuff in the pipe, anyway. We've set ourselves up on this tour we, because because we put a lot of work into the production. It's kind of quite a a, a defined set list but there's a few spots where we kind of interchange and we've asked we've been asking the audience in each town to sort of to vote for which song oh great they'd like to hear which has led us to play stuff we've not played in a while <laughs> um, but it's quite a good exercise in, in like forcing ourselves there's to, been some desperate practicing and sound check oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. well you have to have a whole bunch of things one. ready to go at any given moment it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this should be interesting tonight yeah. uh, this last song Franz Ferdinand Take Me Out tell me about this one this song was the song that made me listen to like indie music, band music, basically. Okay. I I, I, I kind of grew up listening to sort of like um, UK garage music, with not garage rock, just like 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 garage and grime mm -hmm. hip hop stuff. Yeah. Um. And um. And then I kind of like sort of growing up, and then I heard this song, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I like bands as well now. And it like, but it was so, it was so weird. Like, I'm not sure if it was a combination of timing, but it was this. It, like I remember it being this song very specifically. Sure, it was the one that tipped it for me, and I was like, okay. And then I, then I started going to like enemy club nights and stuff. Yeah, um, but I was still wearing my, I was still in my kind of rude boy phase, my hats. You're my still eyebrow. listening to a little bit of Jungle and Speed Garage and all like, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, like big diamond earring and like, eyebrow slits and track suits. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'd go. It's a good look for you, though. No, I, I know. know. I'm, 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 do you know what? Was, I might bring it back. Actually, was your earring diamond or was it cubic zirconia? It might be oh, a cubic. that's a, a real. <laughs> that's, hitting, that's hitting below the belt, my friend. That's it was, uh, yeah. It's a cubic. I was a young. I was a young. I was a young bat. <laughs> I never had a diamond earring. You didn't have to bring that up, did you? <laughs> <laughs> we could. We could have just smoothed it over and carried on. It's all right. This was all like thirteen years ago. It's I all right. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't afford steel, uh, silver. I had stainless steel. I got an infection. Oh, no. My mum had to pop it with a needle. Oh. So wow. I got I bet, I bet that's what you thought was going to happen. You're like, I'm cool. I'm going to get a piercing. You know what I've, you know what, yeah. mom. <laughs> what I've discovered is that it seems like Will has the most sort of health-related problems in the band. Would, would you guys say that's true? Yeah. Or? yeah. yeah. The boys well, falling apart, really. Uh, <laughs> you just I've lived a hard life. Uh, well, you look great. It's, Thanks. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, so, Franz Ferdinand, let's hear it now. <laughs> it's Take Me Out on 94.7 FM. Franz Ferdinand, Take Me Out on 94.7 FM, where it's been a Widmer Brothers perfect playlist. Dan, Kyle, Will, and Chris from Bastille. Thanks again, you guys. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you Thanks for having so much. us. Yeah, you're at the uh, Keller Auditorium tonight here in Portland. It's great to see you guys again. Uh, you've been out on tour supporting the album Wild World, which yes. came out not long ago. Um, sort of looking ahead, will you guys have a bit of time to 
to sort of relax once this is all said and done, or it'll be if back. If I relax, you mean make a next album, then yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is that is that like something where you've already sort of given that some thought back to a studio in London, maybe or elsewhere? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're kind of making a studio in London at the moment because we, we've made our, we've made previously made all of our music in a little windowless basement. Okay. Uh, so we were like, I think maybe with album three, we might have earned ourselves a window. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so good. We, so we bought a shed. And we're kitting it out as a studio where we will call our home and make more wow. music, hopefully. That's a, that's a big step for a band. It's kind of like when you move up from the tour van to the full-fledged bus. You yeah. know, being able to actually build your own studio to your exacting specifications. Um, was there any particular thing where you were really missing something about the other studios you'd worked in that you said, we must have this in our new studio? The pole. We, need, we needed the pole. <laughs> the pole. The pole. For dancing? For, for, yeah. For Dan. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so like you know to keep up on his moves um, <laughs> well because you, you said you're a bad dancer so you have yeah, to work on that I've got need the pole <laughs> uh, I think just space and, and natural light were the two things that we're really missing you know like having like we could set the drum kit up in the old studio but it, sure. it would literally you'd have to you'd have to jimmy open the door kind of squeeze through and climb over the kit to get into the room so then get to the control room so it's kind of I think just to have a, a, a comf a, like a slightly more comfortable space. And the door, the, this always gets me, the door that you walk in to get into the studio, mm -hmm. you go through the live room. <laughs> yeah, that is weird how they do that, isn't it? And so, you know, like, I don't know, would you be recording something? And I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna walk in. And you walk in, <laughs> smash a cymbal and a tom. Oh, sorry guys, and you're midway through a take. It's just the whole thing was a mess. I'll be like, in back, I'll be standing there like, trying to sing really badly, and someone will just walk in and be like, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm on seven. You're like, yeah. nope. <laughs> Not at all. Just doing an album take. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Just also, include it there. It'll be like yeah. ambient background noise or something like that. Security might improve too, because at the minute, the cricket bat by the front door is the current security measure <laughs> in place. <laughs> Get our secrets away, Wood. Oh, yeah. well, hey, Dan, we'll, Dan's pretty handy with, handy with the bat, so you know. We'll upgrade to a baseball bat, maybe. Yeah. Wow, well, all right. Not to paint London as any some kind of like dodgy crime-ridden place or anything. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely city that we call our home. That's great. <laughs> well, guys, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.